I feel like there's this big misconception that if you want to have a successful career in software development, you need to memorize every data structure and every algorithm there is out there, and you need to grind out leak code problems for weeks, if not months on end, before you're even ready to start interviewing for a job. Let's say that one day you decide to take on programming in hopes to turn it into a successful software development career. So you're just getting into programming and you start by learning the basics about coding and then you move on to learning about more high level software design principles. Eventually you start making a portfolio and you start your own side projects and then you, you start to feel yourself a little bit. You say, hey, you know what? I think I'm ready to start looking for that internship, part-time job, or even an entry-level programming job. So you go to Google or YouTube for advice on programming interviews. And immediately you're kind of slapped in the face with videos telling you that you need to learn data structures and algorithms and memorize every single data structure and algorithm there is out there because you don't know what question is going to be brought up in an interview. So it's best to be prepared for all of them. And you're told to get books like Cracking the Coding Interview. And you're told to go to Leak Code and grind out those questions for weeks on end because those are the questions that you're going to be asked in your coding interviews. So you go to Leak Code and you get your first data structures and algorithms question and you realize you have no idea how to solve it. <laughs> then all of a sudden you feel like you're a crappy programmer because people tell you you need to know this stuff and you don't even have the slightest clue how to go about solving this problem. And for the first time, imposter syndrome kicks in. And if you're gonna be in software development, <laughs> you best believe you're gonna, you're gonna feel that a lot more. Anyways, uh, this was me. But instead of going through this experience when I was looking for my very first programming job, I ended up going through this experience uh, after four years of being in the industry. One day I decided I wanted to move to a different city, so I started applying for new jobs. Um, and I got an interview telling me that I'd be tested extensively on my data structures and algorithms knowledge. Because I'm self-taught, data structures and algorithms, it's a huge gap in my education. And I've been in the industry for four years and I've had no practical reason to, I guess, really dive deep into data structures and algorithms. I mean, I knew it was a thing and I knew I probably should learn it eventually, but I kind of just kept it in the back of my head uh, while just working my job. Anyways, for a week, I ended up trying to cram as much data structures and algorithms knowledge into my small brain as possible. Um, but I mean, I ended up failing the tech interview. But regardless, a few weeks later, I ended up getting a different programming job that actually tested me on my practical knowledge in the interview. And that's kind of what I want to get into in this video. The interview that I bombed was for a big tech company in Chicago. And in my four years of working in this industry was the only time that I've ever been tested on my data structures and algorithms knowledge. Is data structures and algorithms important as a dev? And I would say it kind of is, but that's not what this video is about. This video is about the fact that if you're amongst the 95% of devs out there who don't really care to work at a big tech company, or at least right away, but you would be fine having any regular programming job, as long as you can do what you enjoy every day, then you don't need to obsessively grind out leak code questions for weeks and months on end. You don't even have to learn every data structure and algorithm there is out there before you're ready to start applying for jobs. You can get a job as a dev with having almost zero knowledge or at least a very basic understanding of data structures and algorithms. And you can even have a pretty solid career without ever learning this shit. But you're more than capable of getting that first job even going your whole career without ever really diving deep into this stuff. And now if your goal is to work at a fan company or big tech startup, then obviously, yeah, 100%, you need to sit down, you need to study data structures and algorithms out your ass, or you won't ever get a job. You could have, you know, you could build some of the coolest applications in the world, but if you can't invert a binary tree, you're not getting a job at Google. <laughs> Anyways, if your goal is to get a part-time job or an entry-level position, you know, just get your first programming job, and I'd say stick to your portfolio, stick to your side projects, and keep learning practical things that you can actually apply to a job once you get your first job. This doesn't mean when it's time for your, for your interview that you won't be asked any programming questions because that's just not the case. In my experience, I've been asked a handful of technical interviews. I'll kind of go through that list a little bit right now. So for my first internship, I didn't get asked any uh, whiteboarding questions. I was kind of just asked 
briefly about my uh, my knowledge with coding, which was pretty limited at the time. I mean, usually internships, uh, they're not gonna expect that much from you. Again, unless you're trying to get an internship for Google, but if you're just trying to get a regular internship, for me, it was a, it was a small tech company in Michigan. They didn't, really, they didn't really dive too deep into the technical questions. So like I said, internship, no whiteboarding questions, just talked about my coding knowledge. For mid to high level uh, dev interviews, I've had anywhere from hour long paired programming sessions or interviews to take home projects to that one time where I had a uh, data structures and algorithms question, again, for a big tech company in Chicago. I've even been on the other side of the table where I've sat in some interviews for mid to higher end software developer positions. And for the company that I was at at the time, we, we really just had them go over their knowledge and we had them do a mid-level programming question. Now we didn't ask them to sort through a binary tree or anything like that it was just a more general programming question even my dad who's a senior software engineer has been in the industry for 10 plus years it doesn't ask people data structures and algorithms questions when he's interviewing them so anyways you see that not all interviews are going to be based on these data structures and algorithms and leak code style coding questions at least in my experience not applying for big tech companies I didn't have to do these kind of problems. Even when I got an interview for Ford, they didn't ask me to do a data structures and algorithms question. I hope that cleared some stuff up. If you're just starting out as a dev and you don't care to work or at least start at a fan company, then I'd say keep working on your portfolio, keep working on your side projects, and don't be afraid to start applying for jobs, even if your knowledge on data structures and algorithms is limited. There was this tweet back in 2015 from the guy who made the software Homebrew, which is apparently used by 90% of all Google engineers. Um, I guess he had an interview at Google and they asked him to do like a, inverting a binary tree or something like that. Uh, and he got denied of the interview because he couldn't do it. I mean, that kind of blew my mind when I heard that. For the record, I'm not anti-data structures and algorithms. Um, I just want to get the point across that there are a lot of companies out there that will test you on your practical programming knowledge. I kind of always thought that most companies tested you on your data structures and algorithms knowledge, uh, but I mean, I learned through interviewing that it's not always the case, at least for non-big tech companies or fang companies. Anyways, I'll be locked down here in Michigan uh, for the next month or so until I go back to Chicago and get back to my software development job. So if you want to see more videos, make sure to subscribe, follow me on Instagram, and yeah, I'll see you in the next one. How should I outro, like wrap it up? Yeah, do you want to do the outro for me? Me, say? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Tell them to subscribe. Okay, you guys, I hope you like. Just hammer it home. <laughs> like, subscribe, thanks for watching. Boom. Okay, you guys, I hope you liked Kenny's video. Make sure to like it, subscribe to his channel, and then we'll see you for the next one. Boom! Mic drop.